Developing and setting up the production of advanced weaponry requires years of extensive research and hard work. But if you succeed, you can catch your enemy by surprise, or even get ahead in this round of the arms race. Engineers, get ready. The Tokushu Heiki event has just started in War Thunder, and your task is to build a deadly missile. No rocket science required, though. You just have to play the game and receive rewards, and we'll explain the rest. Building a missile is actually pretty easy. First, open the workshop and go to the Tokushu Heiki tab. Here you'll see everything you need for the event. Materials, data on development progress, and factory upgrade toolkits. Let's talk about each of these resources in detail. Materials are a basic resource that are used to assemble missile parts. You get materials by earning points in battles. For every 2,500 points, you receive a resource box, and every resource box contains three to five materials, sometimes even 10. Development progress data sheets are needed to create a final test report, which allows you to ship the missile and get your reward. That might sound complicated, but you get data sheets the exact same way as materials, just by playing the game. For every 7,500 points, you receive a single development progress data sheet. When you get 20 of those, you can convert them into a development progress report. Finally, factory upgrade toolkits are given to players that finish a match at the top of the leaderboards. You don't have to have or even use these toolkits, but they allow you to make the process of assembling missile parts and the missile itself significantly faster. Keep in mind, though, that the level of your factory is reset every time you get a test report, so it's a good idea to use your toolkits early on. Now let's see how it works in-game. Let's say you've just played a few battles and earned some materials. It's time to make some missile parts. Go to the workshop, open the Tokushu Heiki tab, and click the To the Factory button. Different parts require a different amount of materials. Choose a part that you can afford and simply click the Produce button. Once completed, click Finish. Now that missile part is ready. After all required parts are assembled, the only thing left to do is to build the missile itself. You do it in the very same menu. The next step is a bit tricky, though. Before you can ship the finished product, you have to test it. No engineer worth their salt would ever ship a design without testing it first. In order to see whether your missile is combat ready, you'll have to do a special mission. Carefully check the controls, the engine, and the fuel system for any issues. If all other systems are okay, check the fuse. Testing might reveal that some of the missile systems don't work as intended. That means that some of the parts are defective. After you figure out which systems are failing, click the Prepare the Report button and mark all defective parts. If you answer correctly, you'll receive three resource boxes to help you with the production of the next missile. Don't worry though, even if you're wrong, you'll still get something for your troubles, a single resource box. By preparing a report on a combat-ready missile, you'll obtain a target destruction report. Combine it with a development progress report and you'll get a complete test report that can be exchanged for event vehicles. All vehicles obtained from the event are given in the form of coupons that can be activated on your account or sold to other players on the marketplace. For a single test report, you can get the KI-48-2 Otsu, a Japanese light bomber. With its powerful missile and bombs, it'll obliterate your enemies without leaving them a single chance to escape. Fans of ground battles can exchange three test reports for the LOSAT, or Line of Sight Anti-Tank Missile System. It's probably one of the most unusual high-rank vehicles available in the game. It's armed with hypersonic anti-tank guided missiles that can blow any vehicle to smithereens. Instead of a conventional warhead, they employ a solid steel penetrator that punches through armor using massive amounts of kinetic energy. Three test reports can also be exchanged for IJN Kurama, a pre-World War I Japanese battlecruiser. This is a slow but imposing ship, featuring 305mm main battery guns, as well as powerful auxiliary 203mm guns. That's enough firepower to melt the heart of any captain. It doesn't hurt that the battlecruiser also has enough armor to survive any return fire. 
Finally, the last reward that you can get for three test reports is a twin-seat trainer version of the F-100 jet fighter, arriving in the Chinese tech tree. Like other Super Sabres, this aircraft has excellent flying characteristics and is capable of supersonic speed. It's no slouch in the firepower department either. The Jet 6 hardpoints can carry a wide variety of armaments. For ground targets, you have the powerful AGM-12 Bullpup missile, suitable for high-precision strikes against enemy armor. For air targets, there's the Sidewinder air-to-air -air missile. And then you also get retarded bombs, chaff containers, and so on. That's it. Fight, earn points, assemble missiles, make sure they're combat ready, and we'll see you in War Thunder.